Hey, Rock, it's Tina Smasher along with Big Rick. We are live at Carolina Rebellion, one of the headliners uh, and bands you guys are very familiar with, Shine Down, hitting the stage later on tonight. And we've got the pleasure of sitting down with Brent Smith. How are you? I'm doing good. Sorry I'm a little bit late, no. but uh, we were at the uh, we were signing CDs for FYE, and uh, they sold out of all of our media. So there was a huge line, and uh, they asked us, uh, what do you want to do? And normally you'll cut it off, but it's, they've already bought it. So uh, we were there for an extra 45 minutes. Well, so thanks for being patient. You're no actually the most accommodating yeah. person I have ever heard of in a band. <laughs> I think it's nice that you have, um, you know, artists like you that care about, obviously, the people that are buying your CDs and spending hours in line to meet you and get something signed. And you just Absolutely. Don't, yeah. Can't I mean, do it without them. Exactly. You know, we've always said we only have one boss. It just happens to be everybody in the audience. Right. Oh, that's so true, though. So true. I thought maybe you just got done working out. because I, I did that. You, Two hours ago. I wanted to ask you, can we talk about the workout a little bit? Sure. Because um, obviously your transformation is amazing. and you I'm actually a little thick right now. I'm trying to get back to where I was. Don't sweat, don't sweat. <laughs> You're going to be okay. Yeah. You're gonna but be you okay. do a lot of cardio in the, yeah. um, the Beach Body Insanity stuff, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, I was talking earlier to Adrock about this because I, I also work out completely. I hate cardio. So okay. I did Insanity once and my calves hurt for three days and I was like, oh my God, all the jumping and right. stuff. Right. Um, how does that work with the, uh, t you never plateaued? You still do the, you do the same tapes over and over again? Like um, honest to God, um, going back to 2012, um, I had found out about Sean T just as Amazing. a trainer. Yeah. And then that's when the Insanity programs were just being released. So I got that in actually 2011, got about halfway and then stopped. But then I had gotten to a point where I'm 5'8", but I had gotten to 222 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those elements where I said, this isn't going to work for me. And it's definitely not going to work for the guys because they had to come to me and be like, you got to do something. And so I just needed to, I had to basically kind of get a, I had to find a switch. Because um, it was tough in the beginning. Um, but a lot of it was built around the diet um, more than just, I mean, the exercise is always going to be there. But um, since then, um, you know, I have a trainer who's been a dear friend of mine for four years now. And, you know, we go into like total, like, you know, it goes into muscle and, and, and weight training and things of that nature. The cardio really comes into play out here. And yes, I'm a, tradi I'm a traditionalist when it comes to insanity. I still do the original insanity. It's because they're the most effective. Yeah. Um, there's not really a, necessarily a plateau. The only way you're going to plateau is if you start eating like crap. Well, do you, do you just eat clean or do you follow I like, do my really best strict? to eat clean right now. I'm giving myself a little bit more of some cheat days here and there because well, you on the, plateau eating. Too, well, right? on yeah, because it's one of those things where in you know during Amaryllis, which was the last mm -hmm. album, I had just gotten so focused with the fact because I lost seventy pounds, and then it's one of those things where you see yourself for the first time and you haven't seen yourself like that in a long time, and you really don't want to lose that. But you know when we were doing Threat to Survival, you know I fell off. I was still working out, right. but we were in a studio and we were doing things of that nature. Out here though, I'm thirty eight years old. Um, and a lot of the musicians are getting younger, and right. the thing that I have to take into consideration is is that I'm a front man, yeah. and nobody wants to see a front man not taking care of himself. Well, not only that, but I mean, health wise, like you're that's a lot of energy. You're yeah, I have an eight year old shows. son, yeah, and you know? you know, I'm like I said, I have, a, I have an eight year old little boy, and I'm no good to him dead. Yeah, so exactly. I need to be healthy. Yeah, it's funny too because I'm sure you find like I just had like chicken fingers because I was starving and there's not anything Yeah, but that's healthy. fine. But, you know? but I find myself like, oh, God, I feel like crap now. Do you, do you find yourself doing that? Like oh. Only with sugar. Yeah. Like, the sugar is kind of my weakness, but it's also, it makes me feel the worst the next day. Yeah. Um, I have a, I, I guess I have a weakness for double stuffed Oreos. <laughs> so. I, I actually think they're, they're made with weakness ingredients wise. I think they make that. Yes. Mine it's, is carbs. I'm Italian and I love pasta. Oh, yeah. So do I. Yeah, yeah. I I'm all about pasta. that too. So I, I'll, I'll eat pasta for breakfast. I'm like, let me get, if I, if I want it, I'll eat it for breakfast. I'm Italian. We in. had to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had no choice. Yeah, yeah really. So, uh, well, if you're, I own a fitness studio in, here in North Carolina, but it's aerial arts. It's like uh, aerial silks and nice. Lira and stuff like that. So um, I love talking to people who do different types of work. Carrie work King's wife does that, too. Well, if you're ever back in North Carolina and you have some free time, we'll throw you on the silks and bring we'll it make on. you so... Oh, don't... I'm, don't I'm actually... I'm, should, I'm like, bring it on. Yeah, no, I... Well, I always bring the bands through um, the studio mm. when they come into town. Yeah. Um, and every single one of them is like, oh, 
my God, I can't play guitar tonight. Like, my arms hurt that bad. It's an intense workout. It yeah, really I'm sure is. it is. I'm sure it's built all around the core also. Yeah, That's the biggest thing that I've learned over the years with just getting more fit that... Your core is like the number one thing. People don't know what your core is. That's your abs. It's made in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I have one the gigantic ab. I, I went ahead and just made one. Yes, but it's a. It looks like it's a it, passionate it, ab. It, it is. is. It is <laughs> passionate. This ab does a lot of things which people think it can't do. I, yeah, I can, yeah. I can I re- tell. I remember seeing you guys doing this for the first time, and I think it was probably it was at the it was in Pittsburgh on the Carnival Madness tour, and I actually saw it from a distance, and I thought. I thought maybe they like the the crew was in trouble because it was a whole bunch of you doing it. And mm-hmm. I thought he makes them do push ups or something <laughs> when they're bad. Yeah. That's what I actually thought the first you might, time. Yeah, if you weren't watching a workout and you saw like a bunch of people doing push ups, that's called the drop. So out here in this crew, um, as you're walking around, going about your day, working, doing your thing, if someone yells out "drop," you have no choice. And the person who yells it out count. The counts person who yells it out counts it out and also decides how many it is. So I'm randomly, I'm doing that at work with you guys when you make. I'm going to have to find a so, station. So randomly, you could get dropped thirty push-ups. It could be sixty push-ups. It could be five push-ups. That's, but if you get dropped and you're in the area, you got to drop. I did, I saw that and I was like, what? I think they're bad. Like <laughs> that was this. You weird. know what I find though that's um, crazy too is like. Like, Matt from Trivium and I are, are, are good friends, and, and we like to grapple and do BJJ and stuff like that. And I f- um, I'm starting to see more and more of the... You like to grapple? I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, like, I, I train cage fighting and boxing and stuff like that, because I like, I like to try different fitness things. But um, I find that a lot of musicians on the road tend to lean towards exercise more than partying. And I don't know if it's just a certain age once you and hit, older. Once yeah, you hit you know 30, what I mean? hangovers are a bitch. Oh, I know. Well, trust me, I know. Once you get, once you I get mean, 30. I mean, I'm almost 30. Yeah, you but, get about four years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my, my thing, too, is just the, the simple fact that, I mean, anyone that's followed anything about me uh, over the years, um, yeah, I've, I've been a drug addict, you know, since I was 16. And, uh, and an alcoholic and everything else. I'm not really an alcoholic. I'm more of a drunk because I never ever like drink to like have fun and socialize. Yeah. I drank when I did drink to fall down. Yeah. So uh, it's one of those things where I don't, you know, go into it with anybody and say that I'm sober. I don't do 12 steps or anything like that. Um, I, I totally commend it. Um, but it's just for me uh, over the years uh, as I've gotten uh, clean. I've just always told people that you know I'm sober today. I don't know what I'll do tomorrow. So I have to kind of like just live it one Some day people, at a time. Yeah, that's but that's right. just the way that I'm built. That's exactly. just the way I'm Some hardwired. Some people need to go to meetings. Some people turn to fitness. Some yeah. people turn to photography, like Nikki Six. Some people, you know what I mean. So yeah. everybody has their own. Yeah. Their own thing. And one thing with me too is just you know I've, I've lived in California for six years and my son's eight now and I'm just missing him grow up. So I actually sold my house mm-hmm. in California. Um, and uh, and now I'm uh, I don't want to say I'm homeless, but I ain't got a house, so right. I just like go back to Florida and be with you know to be yeah. with my son now. And it's kind of it's kind of freeing to not have any you know because I'm single and you know my little boy is like the number one thing in my life aside from Shine Down. Um, so it's, I'm in a very unique place in my life right now. You're Minimalist, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's totally. You're in a great place. Oh, and you know, not to bring up anything that is hard to deal with, but I remember the first time seeing you guys at the Crowbar in State College, yeah. PA, and this is 400 cap, you know, and there was maybe 300 people there. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable to have seen an early show like that mm-hmm. and watch the development, not only of the band. I mean, there obviously were a couple changes in between there, but yeah. um, to see you guys headlining festivals in front of 40,000 people and thinking about that Crowbar show, um, God, the, I, I hope you write a book. I hope you write a whole bunch of books because it's the story is tremendous. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I, I have to be honest, though, um, I really do have to give it to the audience because I remember, you know, in the very, very beginning, we had this idea from a media standpoint that they were going to really, really love us and that it was going to be, you know, MTV and on the cover Rolling Stone and Spin and like all these different things. And it just didn't happen like that. But the one thing that has always been true to form from day one, and we're very, very lucky and very blessed by this is that radio never turned their back on us and everybody in radio actually got what the band was about well, thank you and so um, much. Yeah, it's very nice we to never hear. hear that no but i mean honestly the, the <laughs> yeah, band the the, the 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 main two elements of why this band has a career is the radio because you brought it to the people and ultimately they'll decide whether you stay or you'll go um but they've uh 
that they've spoken very loudly that they want us to stay. Well, cranking out hits doesn't hurt. Yeah, we, I we do mean, our it's best. A, you're a hit factory. <laughs> we try. Right. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, I will never find. I thought it was very classy, and I, I think people think something differently. I don't want to ruin the mystique of rock and roll, but it's very friendly atmosphere. There's not hookers and blow all no. over the place back no. here. But what, you guys are not only some of the nicest people, but uh, how respectful you were at Louder Than Life last year because Skinner played before you and they told you to start and how you just kind of stopped the show and so we need to apologize to Leonard Skinner. It's, it's neat to see that bands actually care about stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, you know, we were inspired by a lot of different artists and, and doing these type of events is... It's fun for us too because we get to see a lot of our friends in other bands. It's kind of like summer camp, yeah, and yeah. and and it's also, I like it because there's, it's a healthy competition. Like everyone's like high fiving each other and seeing their old friends and stuff, and seeing you in catering and stuff like that. But when the witching hour comes for you and it's time for you to walk on stage, bring your A game. Yeah, that well, I, I love well, it. that kind of goes back to what you were saying. You know, I'm 38 and the younger guys are, are coming up. It's like you. You're gonna make sure they're not gonna pass you. Pretty much, no. Good it's, for you. It's, it's not happening. <laughs> good for you, man. That's yeah. Awesome. You gotta, and it, it is good though. But th that's that's healthy. There's 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 the most unsexy thing in the world is being cocky, but mm. the really really sexy things are when you're confident. Confidence is super super sexy. It's, it is. Yeah. It is. Does that go along kind of um, how you've changed? I don't want to just say outfits, but the look of the band over time. I mean, is it is it kind of keeping up with the competition or changing yourself? Or does it have to do with the writing of the songs? Because you've obviously, I mean, I remember yeah, one well, time you used to be in a, like a three-piece suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it depends on the style of the tour, too, sometimes. Like, I mean, we wanted to, like, the very first time that we put button-downs on and ties and, like, we're putting vests on and things of that nature, that was during the Amarillo cycle. And we wanted we we did a tour on Sound of Madness at the very very end uh, called Anything and Everything that was an acoustic show where we let the audience ask questions in between songs That's and we cool. talked about what each song actually meant. It was actually the most psychologically uh, intense touring I'd ever done because I had to express where all these songs came from because I'm the main lyricist in the band. Yeah. So, but from the outfits. We wanted to do something that was kind of chic and kind of cool and classy because we were like, we're never going to look back at these pictures and say that was a bad idea because it looked good. Yeah. You know? Um, and then, like, when we do Carnival of Madness and things like that, you know, the last one we did, we were all done up with, you know, I had crazy outfits on that and stuff and there like was that. that. The hoops and all kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was all kinds of things like that. And now we've got, you know, we're doing Carnival again this year because we're on cycle. So, uh, the set design for that is uh, probably one of the most insane things that we've ever put together. Um, Do you get to input that? Absolutely. We're working is with... Is this your show, the Carnival? Carnival is... Well, it's us, it's Hailstorm, it's Black Sun Cherry, and a band called Whiskey Myers. But uh, we are the headliner. Yeah. With Five Finger Death Punch, we got together, and this is something that's been in the works for about a year. All the stuff that we're doing in the fall with Five Finger, that's, that's been... That's like a year ago we started talking to them about that, and they started talking to us about it because we wanted to do it. Um, but we That's just want, but we just wanted to do it the right way yeah. because it is a co-headlining tour. But we want both bands to just we just pretty much on that tour. We're, our goal is just to go out and annihilate everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean by that? The tour yeah, because yeah. six AM's on it and yeah. as lines Bruce Dickerson son who's awesome with that and oh, Nikki yeah. and, and Nikki Six and you know us you know Nikki and Zach you know our guitar player Zach Myers they, they've been friends for like three and a half years. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a huge, big tour that, you know, we've set up, you know, a year in advance. Yeah, that's it, it's almost like a mini festival in the, you know, in an arena every night for fans. I mean, it's not like you don't want to get there and see every single minute of every single band. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. But we're stoked to be at Carolina Rebellion because there's a lot of bands here today. Oh, yeah, yeah and it's a, the first year for three days. I'm exhausted, but, you know, it's it's a good exhaustion. Well, you look like you're holding it well. Thank the you. Exhaustion. I'm actually sweating really bad and exhausted. <laughs> like, <laughs> exhausted. But we enjoy it. I mean... We'll go take a nap before we go on. I can't take a nap. I'll never. No, I, I, I can't. I'll fall asleep and never wake up. Like, because I'm lame. Like, I go to bed. This is so sad. Because I get up super early. So I go to bed at like 9 o'clock. Street lights, come on. Time gotcha. to go home. Yeah. I like to sleep. I like to get my, you know, I get like six hours. So. I'm busy. I work out all the time. I just, I just talk on the radio. It's all good. Yeah. It's great to see you again, man. You too. Thanks for having us.